Um, greetings, everybody from New York. Thank you so much for joining our webinar today. My name is Roshi, and I'm the outreach coordinator of the MIT SALT program at the New School in New York, and also the webinar coordinator for the IATEFL ESALT special interest group. We're so pleased to have with us today Matthew Kovach who will be presenting today on various apps, including Padlet, that allow students and instructors to collaborate, reflect, organize, share links and videos securely. In this interactive webinar, participants will walk through features of various online applications and learn how to design and save time, teacher prep time that is, and limit teacher talking time and avoid connectivity issues to develop a more student-centered engagement in the online classroom. A little bit about Matthew. Matt teaches, is actually a candidate in the MIT SALT program here at the New School under Leslie Painter Farrell, the director. Matt also teaches in Queens Public Library in New York, home to 800 plus languages. With a wonderful background in ad tech, he applies educational technology to both curriculum development and course design in the hopes of saving teachers prep time and heighten student engagement. Before I hand over to Matt, here are some housekeeping items. Number one, this session will be recorded and available, but do try to stay on for as long as you can. Also, if you have any questions, and I'm sure you will, please do type them into the chat box, which is at the bottom of your screen, like a little bubble. And Matt will get to your questions and I will be screening them as well. This can happen during the session or we will leave a 10 minute after the session ends for your questions to be fully answered. Thank you again and welcome to the webinar. Over to Matt. Thank you so much, Hiroshi. That was an awesome introduction. Um, it is an absolute pleasure to be here on behalf of the New School um, and their TESOL program. And welcome to all the members of IETESOL as well. Uh, I'm here to guide you through an interactive platform that will help you be able to design lesson plans very quickly, as well as being able to include really dynamic content. Um, without further ado, I invite you to either on your mobile device or mobile browser or a desktop browser, in another tab to enter into this site link that I have here, bit.ly, bit.ly backslash training 04 2020. Or you can simply take your smartphone camera and go to your camera, your, your selfie position, and then position uh, the camera so it aims at this black box that we see here below. You don't need to snap a picture. Um, you can snap a selfie before if you'd like though. Um, as you scan, as you have your smartphone over this black box, a uh, notification will come to your phone to hit a link to go to the web page. Um, the entire presentation is on one page, one web page that you can take home with you. Um, so I do invite you to do that at this moment. There's a lot of really cool interactive, um, a lot of really cool interactive elements, uh, and I'd love for you to communicate with me so I just don't get a little lonely on this side. Um, so feel free to do that now at this time to either go to bit.ly backslash training 04 2020 or uh, you can target your smartphone uh, right at the black box. Um, and let me know in the chat when you guys are there. Awesome. Awesome, man. Some thank you so much. Cool. I'll give it about another 15 seconds. No rush. You can either do this on your mobile or desktop. Awesome. I'll wait a couple more seconds for those that are just adjusting. Beautiful, welcome Sarah, Helen, Roshi Jolly. Really cool. All right, I'm gonna transition over into the website. Awesome, greetings. Hello, Artham, how are you doing? Um, I'm gonna transition into the link now. No worries if you still need that link. Okay, I will actually, um, this shortened link will take you to a longer link. This longer link is the permanent link. Um, so I will actually put that in the chat right now for those individuals who are looking to still get on. 
Actually, the shorter length might be easier. Let's do that instead. There we go. Can't see the whole chat box. Okay. Um, I did put that um, link into the chat box in case you're still uh, needing a, a few more seconds to get onto the site. When you put the site into your web browser or you scan it through the QR code, it'll take you to this Padlet. This entire program will be in, um, I have a message saying only panelists can see the chat box. Yes, um, so all of your communication will, will be with me and the panelists. Um, I will just have ask the IT tech team on the other side to just make sure that the others uh, who are joining the webinar today can uh, see the messages that they post. Um, to all of us so that we can see the questions as well, if that's possible. Awesome, all right, let's get into it. Cool, welcome to this Padlet page. Um, by the end of this presentation, you'll be able to make something just as fantastic and really cool. And I will actually walk you through this. Um, the first third of the presentation will be a walkthrough how to create Padlet. The second third of the presentation uh, will go into some third party integrations. And the last part will be really talking about full circle teaching and learning and what that really uh, comprises of. So let's get started with a warm up. I wanted to welcome you warmly to this Padlet. I'd love for you to interact with this post. And by that, I mean, uh, answer into the question below, what types of resources are you using to teach online? Feel free to list a few in the comments below um, and we can talk about it for a few seconds before we move on. Just so you know, um, on this Padlet, you are on um, the anonymous mode so your name will not appear unless you write it into the comments and that would be greatly appreciated so i can give you a gold star um cool awesome so the types of resources that i see here i see here we use slack awesome it's a great one for website communication amongst uh peers um zoom i actually don't have any experience it's really cool that you share that i'll definitely look into that um, yes, I'll be able to share everything, including the video and the webinar and Canvas uh, modules and Zoom, TED, all right, really cool. A lot of the um, technology, uh, we can actually uh, integrate this with Padlet. There's a lot of platforms that are being listed and they're great and you can actually use Padlet to be a partner to really help you with um, you know, other resources like articles, websites, um, applications. Um, so it's really cool. Kuhu, awesome. I'm going to touch on that a little bit, really be able to implement that as well. Really great. Your own website for lesson materials. Great. Pauline, this is going to be an awesome webinar for you. You can plug your website into the Padlet and have students work on different sections and really be able to interact. So thank you so much for participating. This is awesome. As you've probably just noticed, you will probably be sitting in the student seat the entire session to really understand that perception of Padlet as a student and Matt as the instructor, and you can evaluate me at the end to see how well I did as well. Um, but uh, cool, look, we just got into it the first nine minutes and we have um, a lot of really cool ideas. So again, it's very interactive. I'm gonna show you how to um, keep going with that as well. Thank you for participating in that exercise. Oh, couldn't get until now. Did he send us a link to get into Padlet? Yes. Um, Jackie, I will send it to you right there if we can just send that um, to my panelists if you could send that out to everyone just in case cool and just to make sure that jackie gets the link i want to make sure she can have the opportunity to participate with us today um cool i'm gonna um walk, move forward to the agenda thank you for contributing also tomorrow uh, though I do with a student who has no internet or other electronics except for her phone the really cool thing is that you can use padlet on the phone um, which is really awesome um, as well. So that takes care of that. You don't need to just use it on the desktop. So our agenda for today, we're gonna cover um, a Padlet, um, the basics, how to really set it up, how to really be able to integrate it. Um, then we're gonna transition over into the pro level where we're gonna add third party integrations, third party, which is a fancy term in ad technology. That means being able to add other websites and programs um, to really make it fun and engaging. Um, and then finally, we're gonna finish off with what I call full circle teaching, um, call and response, really being able to take that feedback from students as, as you're giving them you know, assignments and work, being evaluate how they're doing in real time, and then tweak, guide, or shift or pivot in your lesson plans to make sure that you're catering to them 
appropriately. Um, so we're going to move on to uh, the next section, the first section here that we have. Um, also, I love the questions that are coming in. If I don't get a chance to answer your question, I will review the Padlet and provide thorough, comprehensive responses within 24 hours. So don't feel like your question will be ignored if I don't get to it. Um, and that goes the same for the chat. I'll download the chat at the end of the session as well. Um, and we'll do a Q&A at the end as well. Cool. So the first section here, um, the basics. We're going to learn um, the purpose and capabilities of, pa of the Padlet platform, be able to use the basic features of Padlet, create a dynamic environment, focusing on student engagement, and assess students in real time, and provide feedback. So get ready. The first entire section, I'm going to do a demonstration, a walkthrough using my own personal Padlet, and how we can create a Padlet for instruction. Everything that I'm going to cover for the next 10 to 15 minutes is also recorded in this video right here, and it's just this chunk. Um, so if I am going a little quickly, you can feel free to come back to this video at any point um, and slow down the actual walkthrough of Padlet. Um, I am dealing with um, different levels of Padlet users here from beginner to advanced, so I'm going to help all of you really achieve the expert level, hopefully by the end of this training. First thing you want to do is you want to go to Padlet.com. That will take you to your dashboard. Here at this dashboard is where all of your Padlets live, both yours and those uh, whom you follow. Um, these happen to be my personal ones. There's also a gallery option here. The gallery option allows you to review examples of other instructors and you know, perhaps other entities that are using Padlet to get some more ideas and get some inspiration on content and themes. So that's more of like an inspiration guide. Uh, you can join a Padlet. The option of joining a Padlet is including the Padlet of perhaps a colleague, a coworker, even my Padlet, the one that I'm using today, so that you have an easy place to go to to really re uh, find all the resources needed. And the last one, and this one is the most fun, here's where we're going to get creative, make a Padlet. In the make a Padlet section, you're going to see eight different styles of Padlets. Okay, I'm going to walk through uh, one, the one that I'm using Padlet for today. We're also going to do an activity with another. So we're going to touch a few of these today, but you can create a wall. Um, and these are just really the styles of how the content will be arranged. So the wall preview looks something very similar to this. Um, you can use it like inspiration dashboard, oops, that was quick. Um, you can add images, you can add content. Um, it really has this whole dream inspiration board uh, look and feel to it. Canvas, this one, is great for graphic organizers. Here they're using it for a leadership uh, you know, organization, but here you can um, also use this to really connect ideas one by one. Um, you can also use it for stream. This is my favorite one. This one follows like a Facebook or Instagram news feed where things are very organized. Um, this is the one that I recommend for instruction. However, we all have um, our different likes. Um, so whichever one floats your boat works well with me as well. Um, here's another one where things are a little bit more organized into boxes. Again, right now at this moment, we're focusing just on the layout. I'll get into content and how to make all these really cool features next, I promise you. The following one is shelf. If you wanted to organize things into columns, here's a great example doing a KWL chart. What we know, uh, what to know, what we learned. Students can then enter this um, together in a collaborative Padlet. Back channel is a style where it's like a text or a WhatsApp group where people put messages, send messages, and they just stack one on top of each other. Uh, this one, you cannot comment under each one. The entire idea here is that each box is its own um, message. So it works similar to like a text message chain. Then we have the map, which uh, get excited because we're going to interact with this one shortly. And this is a global map. And I'm going to show you firsthand how we can use this one in like two minutes, I promise. And then the timeline is great for really organizing content according to time steps. Uh, anything that requires sequence, um, this is great to have students and students would go into this Padlet, it's a collaborative one where they would be able to organize first, second, third, fourth um, content among, uh, on a line, on a timeline. So that's great for things, uh, you know, such as building a paragraph from topic sentence to conclusion, things requiring time. Um, recipes and steps if you want to you know, use imperatives there um, and commands. So there's really cool um, features that are allowed here. Um, the one that I'm going to show you right now is stream. 
which is the one that I use Pilot for to really organize my content. So again, here, uh, this is how the, the Pilot will come when you choose your style. Um, they put really cute messages here that you can customize. Um, will the slides and recording be shared? Yes, it will be. Um, in terms of title, this is usually where I'll you know, name my class. I'll say intermediate grammar, say today's the 29th, and this is all customizable. So you can really make this um, work for whatever it is that, that you're doing, whether it's a specific project, whether it's one small task, you can build an entire Padlet, or you can teach an entire course. I teach an entire course through Padlet, and I have several Padlets, one for each week. You can create a description. I like to include my name just so the students don't forget me. Um, how would this integrate with our LMS Canvas? Really cool. Um, this is similar to a Canvas or LMS. So the platforms are kind of competing against each other only because in Canvas and LMS and those, you know, you can create modules, you can create different sections. You could use a Padlet link. So you can take the link at the top here, uh, which is, you know, made for your Padlet. And then you can enter into your LMS or Canvas for students to be able to go to the Padlet to enter into the, enter in, uh, you know, whatever ideas, discussions, posts or questions. And I'll show you later on, really good question, Jackie, how to, uh, you know, how Pilot could be used for different skills and different projects. So we're gonna get there. Um, you can also choose an icon here. Oops, going quickly here. You can choose an icon to, to make this a little bit more adorable. Um, your wall power, you, wall paper, you can use any one of the custom images that you have here, or you can choose you know, your own images um, to really customize um, the Padlet itself. Uh, attribution will only work if students are logged into their own Padlet's accounts. Basically, it allows their name to show up above of each post. And then, on the, uh, and then for a new post position, I like to pick the last option, meaning that each time they submit a post, students, their posts will come last in order. Um, so it follows some, for them, some form of a thread. I like to have the comment section on to allow for feedback and also reactions like liking a post, loving a post, um, upticking, using a thumbs up, thumbs down and the star option as well. And I'll show you what that's gonna look like in the post. I don't require approval, I trust my students, but for filtering profanity, I do do that um, just to you know, make sure that everything is G rated. And then I hit the next button, we've created our Padlet. Um, here we go, I'll start posting. Um, in order to create content, the second part of this section, you would hit the plus sign here, um, which is the pink button. Let me do that one more time so we see, and this is really what's going to help us um, develop content is clicking this button and you immediately have a post and across all the different designs in Padlet, you're creating posts essentially. You are collaborating, providing your content. So here's a title, um, you know, this could be you know, grammar topic one as an example. You can include content down below and I'll give you examples in my Padlet how I do that. Um, and then, you know, examples of that could be instructions, it could be examples, it could be you know, having incorrect sentences and having students correct them in the comments section. When you click out, um, those features that we selected or toggled on now appear here. So you can like, you can provide an answer. Um, and this is all in real time. So as I'm doing this, um, this would also be updating on the students' uh, Padlets in real time with no delay, which is really cool. A couple other neat options that you can do within Padlet is you can upload material uh, so you can you know, pick a file from your desktop, PDF, an image, anything you'd like. You can link any link, anything that's linkable works perfectly here. So like National Geographic articles, the New York Times in plain English, whatever it is that you're using as resources that you mentioned at the top of the hour, you can implement those, those links to appear. So I'll give you an example. I'll use the standard Google link, boom. Um, and it appears here with a nice little preview link. Students would just click that button um, and it would take them to Google. A couple other options you have here, you can do images. So the Padlet, what's really cool is it has an AI feature where it reads the material that you're posting and you're writing about. And so it'll try to select 
um, topics that are similar. So if I were to put like the present passive articles and images would have come up here about the present passive. And so that helps you really allocate materials. All that you need to do is review them. So here are all the images. You can also uh, use video. Again, you can put a YouTube link or you can use one of the video links that are coming up here. If you're focused on one grammar topic, typically videos relating to that topic will appear here on the videos. You can use GIFs. I love using GIFs. Um, careful, some of them move a little quickly and cause some people to be nauseous. Um, some feedback that I got, so use your best discretion there, but it makes it fun, it makes it personable. You can also add audio as well. Um, so if, if I were to put, I love that I'm on the present passive today. Um, you can actually see if there's something that's relatable to the topic that you're teaching and add audio links for students to be able to listen to. Or the web pulls out websites, right? So if you needed a quick extra help source, you can find um, an article here on this list or from your own resources and plug that in. Just like that, you click the button, it comes here, it appears in your post. You hit the post and then it takes them right to the website in another um, browser. Yeah, it's really cool. I love it. And it is a great repository. Yeah, it's incredible. It gets me really excited when I put these classes together. And really fun fact, the first time I did a Padlet, uh, you know, it took a couple hours because I got really excited. But this past week, normally a four hour prep period for me, you know, I was able to dwindle down to one hour just by being able to plug in things quickly and have it be engaging. So it really is a time saver. So that's really the basics, guys. And I'm definitely confident that you know how to do this. Um, even though some of you may be looking at this for the first time, I'm going to go ahead and go back to our Padlet, um, review a couple materials, and then um, I will actually have you interact in a Padlet, and then we'll move on from there. Um, is it always live time? Can you add content and publish later? Really great question, Caitlin. And um, in terms of, uh, yeah, it's, it's always live. I recommend sending out the link when your Padlet is ready. Um, yeah. Gosh, I'm all over the place. I'm sporadic between reading questions and answering questions. <laughs> um, yes, it's always live. I recommend sending this out to students uh, when it is completed. And um, another thing, gosh, I'm really bobbing to it. Uh, I want to actually go back to the Padlet that I created. I do want to show you some security features that I think you'd appreciate, especially now during this time. Um, in terms of security, you can share it. Um, to specific emails by hitting add members or you know students that already have accounts you can locate them here um, you can also set the privacy settings so it can be completely private and hidden from everyone um, it, and include with the exception of just the students that are you know you've selected in the add members you can password protect it I like to have mine be secret so it's just those that have the link can go on to the site and be able to interact with it or public meaning it could be public and it could have you know, appear on Google. So use your best discretion. If you're using resources, you know, from textbooks, I definitely recommend uh, what we call a gated community, meaning keeping your resources just locked amongst you and your students, um, just to protect yourself from any copyright issues. Visitor permissions. The Padlet that I'm using, I have set for just can edit. Um, I'm sorry, can read and add posts or add comments. And then the can write option allows students to view and add posts to the Padlet and the can edit is fully 100% collaborative. Students can go in, they can add things, they can delete things. So I recommend can read for instructional materials where you are given instruction, you just want them to collaborate and comments. The can write if you want them to add posts, so discussions, so one whole Padlet could be a discussion question and then you can have them add, um, uh, posts to it. So I do this a lot for journal activities and anything that requires student collaboration and creation and creativity. Can edit is, is much more freer. Um, so that's kind of the basics. Another thing here, you can also share using the copy link. You can create a QR code just like how we did at the beginning of the hour. Um, you can embed it in a blog, you can email it. For students that are having connectivity issues, you can save the entire Padlet as an interactive PDF. You can email it to them if they have a weak internet connection and they can click on the clickable links to be able to still participate in the lesson and perhaps email um, their input to you. So that would be like a last case scenario if we're dealing with major issues and 
you know, it's hard to act and they're having issues accessing it on, you know, mobile because of poor connection. Um, so that, you know, is an option as well. Going back to the Padlet, um, a few things to review. Thus far, we've learned the eight different styles of Padlets that you can create. Um, let's see this. Can you restrict access to specific IP addresses? That's a really good question. I actually don't know the answer to that. Um, I would recommend making it a private link and then in the private, uh, you know, making a, a, a secret link just to access with your students um, or put your students in directly um, in the add students feature. So just the students that you have selected and yourself can, can access the Padlet. Um, I don't think you can go in and um, limit it to geolocations, unfortunately. Um, really good question though. Awesome. And so those were the eight styles of Padlets that we've covered. I want us to actually get into the nitty gritty and have us roll up our sleeves here. Um, just to review, adding a post, you click the plus sign that's on the bottom corner or the top corner to be able to create a post. And then you can actually add comments to what um, individuals have posted by posting them underneath as you would in Instagram or Facebook. Um, so the task I'd like um, as many of you to, to complete, if you don't mind, is answering this question in the actual Padlet. So where is your favorite place to travel? I'd love for you to click the link, go into Padlet, you have it open on your mobile, your second device, hit the plus button right here, the pink plus button that'll always guide you. And then literally here under um, search by name, you can um, place the location um, that you love to travel to. So I'll actually put Cancun, Mexico. The location will appear. It'll take you directly to that location. And all I'd like you to do is just add your name and click out. Boom, that's all I'm asking you to do. Um, and then we'll actually be able to see everyone's responses on the mega map. So you can zoom out here and see um, everyone's answers as to where um, they like to travel or their favorite place to travel. Um, so feel free to do that now at this time. I just want to show you this really cool feature um, and also get some practice with creating a post and providing a comment. Um, so feel free to do that now at this time. Let me see if, uh-oh, David Kennedy, let me do this one second, sorry. This was actually not set to edit. I have it to can edit now, so now you should be able to, if you refresh your page, be able to add the locations to the map. Let's see if that allows you to post. Let me know if you are oh, awesome. We're getting some responses here, really cool. Uh, for those people that uh, first went onto the site, my apologies, I didn't have the edit access for um, you guys to contribute. Um, again, that can be found under the security settings, which is the share, and then changing the privacy to can edit. Um, that will allow students um, to be able to really contribute to the Padlet. So give us a couple of seconds. Awesome, we're getting some answers here. All right, uh, Leanne loves to go to Mexico City. I was actually just there for Dia de los Muertos. I loved it, I was there for three weeks. I came back, my coworkers told me I spent too much time abroad, um, but I would never trade that experience for the world. Awesome, we have Egypt, Spain. I still haven't gone there yet, Roshi. I'd love to get your recommendations. I hear Barcelona and Madrid are amazing. Um, who sees or owns the content activity created on Padlet? I'm sorry if I missed. Not a problem, YT. And the people who can see um, the content are those that you give permission to. So I've given permission to everyone who has the unlisted link. Um, so those individuals, anyone that has the link can see this content and contribute, but I can also limit it to just students by adding students in. I mean, is it owned by Facebook, Google, Amazon? That's a really good question. I did not... Um, do my background information, my background homework on that. But I can get back to you on that, YT. 
Um, th later on, there'll be a section for people to put questions into the Padlet and I can get back to you. But yeah, that's a really good question. Um, so let's just see what else. Ah, Poland, Leslie. Ah, that's where my, my family's from. Southern Poland, Krakow, woo! Um, Ireland, yes, I have still not, I haven't been there just yet. Paris, France, I hear is beautiful. Florence, um, Italy is marvelous. Um, Bellameo, I'm probably mispronouncing that. Um, that is a really cool spot. I love your guys' recommendations. Feel free to add your records in there if you like at a later time. Australia, yes, that is so cool. Awesome, really cool. I love the engagement here. Um, so keep adding it if you haven't been able to add. Um, Japan, oh, I have a student from Japan. I was going over really, really cool uh, types of food there that got me really hungry. Um, so really cool, guys. Thank you for contributing. Again, if you zoom out, which you can zoom out even from the student view from the bottom left, hitting this minus button to its maximum capacity, now we see everyone's responses. And let's take it a step further. I can actually um, write comments, right? That's really cool. All right, and then I can add more and I can send, and now I've added a comment to that post. In the map feature, they add the comments on the side panel. Um, however, let me see if, I don't believe I can add comments to the, Actually, I do have comments. Okay, the comments appear on the left, on the right side here. So you can actually review people's comments and feedback. In other templates, the comments just appear right underneath the, the post, the box. Um, so, um, you know, that's definitely a possibility and option. I can also like it as well and really be able to kind of drive a conversation here. I love this. Vancouver, oh, such a beautiful city. Gosh, I have a friend that lives out there. I need to visit him. Um, so, cool. That's essentially the biggest feature here is being able to create and add content. Um, the creating the Padlet may take one or two times to be able to develop to your liking, but adding comments and writing feedback is an important, crucial feature here. Um, and so I love everyone's interaction. This is really cool. And we could drive this conversation for hours to talk about travel, but I won't do that. I'll save you that. I'm going to go back to the Padlet um, and continue the presentation. Um, but I hope that gives you some confidence with interacting with the Padlet and being able to really, you know, share um, and, and respond to one another. Really cool. Yes, that got me too, Mr. or Mrs. Anonymous, the pink circle. The first time I used the geography feature, I had to find it. It's usually in one of the corners. This is really cool. Does the location of the comments pink circle vary according to the device you used? No. I don't know that. I've only tested it out of Queens, New York, and it's always been the, the pink circle, the plus button. Um, but yeah, that's a really good question. Again, just to review, in every comment, even on the map that we were, at, that we were just doing the exercise, you can upload a file, a GIF, an image, you can add a link, you can say, hey Matt, here's Japan, and you know, here's the really cool places I want you to visit, about, visit in Japan. You can use Google to search images. You can snap a, a picture from your mobile that you're using right now or your desktop if you hit that feature. You may ask me, Matt, where is this found? When you're creating a post, shoot, find here. Creating a post, you can find all of this right here. These options, just to review. Um, ba -ba 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 -ba. Snap, you can film, you can record directly in a Padlet. Be careful though, Padlet gives you three Padlets free. Um, a full year of Padlet, I believe, is $90. I think it's worth the investment, personally. Um, but it does, you know, come with size, you know, maximum. So I recommend doing all of your filming outside of Padlet. Um, an example of that, in this video, if you'd like to watch us at a later time, which is just a walkthrough of everything that I've done for the last 15 minutes with you, um, I start off with a quick blurb about using Screen Recorder. This is a device where you go on this website, you hit launch free recorder, downloads a file, you click that button and it records um, the screen and your face or you know, just the screen. You can choose what you like to record and it uploads immediately into YouTube, not into Padlet. And then you take that link and you put it in Padlet um, as, a, as a link and students can watch the entire video within Padlet and you don't have to use a storage that's within Padlet. So that's a really cool feature. Um, you can share, record your screen. You can draw an image for those that are teaching design classes. You can place a location like we've just done. 
or you can link another Padlet. Awesome. Utah, go Utah. Hey, Francesca. Um, awesome. Another really cool feature that I want to present to you right now, I can hit the delete post button. And as I delete this, it's, it's, you're going to watch your, um, your mobile or your second uh, you know, browser that you're watching, that you're reviewing the Padlet. As I delete this post, it's going to delete in real time off of your screen. So say during the class, we need to pivot because we're taking too much time and we can't get to other assignments. I can just delete them off of the Padlet in real time. And as you probably just noticed on your screens, voila, it's gone. There's no refresh needed. So if you make a mistake or there's a typo or a misspell, no need to feel shame or embarrassment, just feel free to delete or edit in real time. You can edit any of the content here on Padlet. Um, like I can go into here and say, this one is my favorite, right? And as I click out, you're gonna notice that it updates on your screen right now. Um, 1D here, I actually have some resources for you, some that are on Padlet, some that are outside of Padlet, um, just ideas that you can use if you just wanna stay within Padlet and um, you just use those capabilities. So I have some ideas here you can review at a later time. Um, I wanted to go more into skills focus activities, um, but this was a general bank of ideas, excuse me, where um, you, know, you can use icebreakers, you can compliment, you can do an online student portfolio. And I'm sure you have a lot of questions here as to um, you know, the, you know, where, how can I use this, where can I use this? And I'm gonna get a little deeper into that in the next section. But just, if you wanna do a one-off Padlet, you want to have an icebreaker, really connect with your students. These are some of the ways that you can. Okay? I want to get something that's a little bit more meatier for you, meatier for you so that you can. I do have stop signs in my Padlet. Why? I don't walk through every single post with my students together. I do an asynchronous, synchronous approach where we come together for the four hours, but I give them allotments of time where they break away from me to work on several different posts. And I watch them through the comments and get to interact with each other just so I don't feel like I'm having a, a tight grip um, on them the entire class and we're walking through each and every you know, post individually and it slows them down. So I use the stop feature. This is just an image off of Google Images and I allow them to work through the entire section and then we come together to review on Zoom or through some sort of a webcam feature. Um, so that might be a strategy that, that you may like to use um, in your class to give your students some breathing room to be able to work on things at their own pace. Awesome, we're going into the next section. We're gonna ride up to the pro level, we're gonna pump it up. In this section, we're going to learn how to use third-party integrations. Again, what are third-party integrations? They're just websites, programs, apps, anything that's outside of Padlet and how we can put them into this Padlet. Um, in this section, I'm gonna review a lot of technology solutions, um, technological solutions, adjectives. Uh, during this time, you're gonna have a lot of questions about how to use this software, how to use that software. I have YouTube tutorial links for everything. Um, I wanted to focus on a macro level about all the tools that you can use. There's a lot of teachers that are doing webinars specific to the tech. Um, and if you did need any help um, using one of the tech, you can feel free to email me and I'll supply um, some more resources. So starting off quick, this is probably review attaching materials. Um, this post has two objectives. One, I want you to see how I communicate with students in terms of a topic, giving directions, using the bullet feature, adding um, some type of a attachment. Um, and the second part is to, to give you some research that really backs up that Padlet is, um, you know, a really fun tool. It has its pros, it has its cons, like every sort of technology, but really giving you that information for you to use. Um, and so I would you know, have directions, I'd have some supplemental materials or examples, and then I'd ask the students to comment below. And as you probably noticed from earlier in the presentation, the comments update in real time, which is really cool. Moving on to differentiated learning, this is a hot topic in the industry. How as an instructor can we um, teach in a manner that appeals to everyone's levels, right? Students are multi-leveled forms of learning, some are tactile, some are auditory, you know, some are visual like myself. And so using video, recorded video, to pre-record your lessons or the lesson chunks where you're teaching the target language is an excellent form that has saved me a lot of time from reteaching um, the same point or using many different examples to communicate a point. Why? Because a lot of times students just need to watch or review the same material that you communicated again. 
And by recording videos and having here be a video on here's how to use the present passive, allow students to pause during the video, rewind, and it helps them be able to really formulate and craft whatever it is, the processing that need, they need to understand how to use a form, for example. So when I teach, I teach my targeted language chunks um, shortly after the preview section by recording myself before the lesson and adding a YouTube link where students will watch me for two to six, five minutes, you know, giving an example, whatever the tactic, deductive or inductive reasoning may be for them to be able to watch the, the video. And it also helps for students who um, are having connectivity issues. When you're teaching live, there's a lot of interruptions in terms of noise and audio. By watching a video, it's much more uh, streamlined in terms of bandwidth. So they'll get the entire video, they'll watch it all in one piece and not have to stop um, and, and mishear you live. Another feature that I offer, that I recommend for vocabulary is using Quizlet. In Quizlet, um, you can use the learn feature. Um, by clicking the learn feature in your, in your um, Quizlet, I have an example here I wanted to show you. Yes, it's like a flipped class. Exactly, you can send them the information beforehand or you can um, you know, have that information be present in the, um, in the Padlet and they can watch that content during class time. Screencast gives you a maximum of 15 minutes free and, eat, and you just keep refreshing the page and you can use it as many times as possible. So I use it to record all my videos. I can't see teaching one target, you, one target piece last more than you know, 15 minutes and I'm talking about just introducing the topic, giving examples. So I like to keep those videos short. Back to Quizlet, um, what I love using the Quizlet feature for is really being able to have the students interact with Quizlet to learn the vocabulary. So I import the, the words, the definitions and the examples, and then here they're able to um, interact with the technology, the software by doing multiple choice and fill in the blank, and the machine will advance them from remaining to familiar once they get it correct once and then mastery once they're able to fill in the blank and answer another multiple choice question. So I'll give my students, you know, 20 minutes, depending on the complexity of the vocabulary, to be able to go through this with visuals, um, definitions and example sentence and be able to choose the correct answer and play at this. And Quizlet, if the student keeps getting it wrong, that question keeps coming up until they get it, which is awesome. So by the time they're finished with Quizlet and they're about to move on to the reading, they are very comfortable with the vocabulary and it's definitely a proven tactic that has worked. If you're interested in learning more about that, here's the tutorial to fill, set up your Quizlet. Um, and feel free to reach out to me to get more information about Quizlet for vocabulary. For reading, I recommend uh, to really develop reading skills. I, I recommend Nusella, ReadWorks, National Geographic, another great resource is Learning English VOA News. Um, essentially, you would create accounts on one of these four platforms and you take the share link, and that's what you'd put into into Padlet. So that students, when they go into your Padlet, would just click the link, it takes them directly to the reading article, the quiz, the vocabulary that they need to go into, and then they'll be able to come back um, and you know report on any struggles or difficulties. If you have a teacher account on one of these platforms, then you can also see their results in real time. Newsella and ReadWorks are awesome. They're my top two. Um, why? Because they customize the level based to the students by, based by the student's performance. So if they notice that the student's weaker, they will make the, the reading slightly easier in terms of content, complexity, speed. And if they're really advanced in their level, then they'll bump them up. And you as the instructor can see where all the students fall on um, a line. And so New Zealand ReadWorks provides that option. I love National Geographic because they provide so much um, content that is really thought provoking. It really incites a lot of great conversations. So here's some packets articles that come with comprehension questions in a teacher's guide. Um, which ones again, Newzella and ReadWorks. The reason why I like these two is because it's all in the system. You don't need to download any PDFs. You just share the link, put it in your Padlet and are able to go directly into the program and work on that reading, uh, the pre-vocabulary, the reading and then the reading comprehension after. And National Geo Reading VO, Reading English VOA News, um, they can do the same, but you can't see their performance to, to, to my knowledge, um, but they do have the option of reviewing vocabulary, the reading, and some comprehension questions to check their, um, their knowledge there. 
Um, and then, uh, uh, what else did I want to say here? Oh, what I really also like about ReadWorks is they have an article for a day, so it changes every day. And they have differentiated articles, as I've stated before, in the software that really helps, you know, weaker students, you know, feel encouraged and then more advanced students to really be able to, um, you know, be challenged in the classroom. Uh, adult ESL, all four, all four of these, all four. Great question, Alan. Moving along to Flipgrid for speaking, okay? And again, I'm going through the skills rather quickly to give you high level macro on what types of technology I use with my Padlet. Um, you will probably feel a bit overwhelmed with the amount of information. I recommend jotting the technology that stands out and then reviewing the particular section to get a full comprehensive perspective on that um, skill or activity. For speaking, I recommend Flipgrid. And the reason why I, use, I recommend Flipgrid is it's a safe environment. Some teachers use Instagram and Facebook groups, and that's a little bit more public and you can come across some uh, content that may not be best suited um, for students or have people kind of interrupt. With Flipgrid, you create an account. Um, you, and once you create an account, you create your class, you create a discussion question, and students on the application or even the website from their mobile or their desktop can record their response to your discussion up to five minutes and be able to send all within the same app, which is really cool. There's no need to record a video in your camera and then transfer and then upload and then, oh my God, it's overwhelming. Um, it's all in one. And what's really great is you can create a rubric that just gets sent out to individual students and students can watch each other's videos and provide comments through a video response, um, which is really neat. Um, I definitely recommend this for Flipgrid, giving students, perhaps those that are teaching asynchronous, the ability to communicate and connect within the classroom with other students. It's important to get that face time as we're in the virtual world. What about resources for adult ESL? Uh, students, Flipgrid, asynchronous, yes. And I also recommend using, I believe it's like one, Wonder, Wonder Lapis, what Wonder Lapis, Wonder Lapis. It's a, I'm mispronouncing, I'll send the, I'll add the link to this at the end of the presentation, but it's also a website that gives out really thought provoking questions that students can answer um, uh, based off of a particular hot topic or, you know, common theme. Um, in culture. I really recommend using critical thinking questions in readings, from readings. Um, so I'll post a lot of thought-provoking critical thinking questions from National Geographic. Where I use that as a reading source in my class and I will have students really elaborate on, um, you know, whatever it is their answer is to each other. How many minutes of content can students parse within a week and meaningful engage with their peers? How many minutes? The videos to upload are up to five minutes. I usually just post you know, one assignment with Flipgrid per week. And if I give them like a reading or writing, I like to manage to make sure that all the work overall is manageable, not overwhelming to the students. But it's five minutes of recording. Sure, the first time students are gonna spend a little bit more time because they feel that perfectionism. But after the first one, they just know to record, upload. I mean, we're not performing on Broadway. It does not to be, need to be perfect. We need it to be authentic. Um, so they can record up to five minutes. Um, and then, you know, respond to each other as well. I hope I was able to answer your question. It's hard for me to give an exact answer there. Um, for listening, the uh, resources that I recommend are Edpuzzle. Edpuzzle allows you to use YouTube videos or upload your own videos from different content and be able to interrupt the video with, with comprehension questions. Um, so I believe I have it here, quick little demo. Let's see if this uploads. Um, where you're able to, oh, there's that picture I wanted to show you, upload your video and then you can interrupt it throughout the chain, the audio in the video and be able to ask you know, your multiple choice questions, your fill in the blank. So it's a lot more interactive. And then as an instructor through your teacher account, you can see the answers that were um, uh, submitted. And students can also get quick uh, feedback as well. What kind of classes are you creating this content for? Thank you, Mr. Where you've been using these apps. I use this in an ELL, so I teach my English language learners in an adult ELL program, um, and I customize the content based off of what we're learning out of our textbook series and supporting resources, and then I implement them in, through these apps to be able to really get their reading, writing, speaking, and listening skills um, 
to, to, to really flourish during the semester. Another resource I recommend is Ed Talks that's geared for ESL learning. So you can click this link and it'll take you to a lot of great resources for using um, TED Talks. And the last one, this is something I found out this past week. So those of you that have taken this webinar before, um, yes, Jackie, hold in tight there. Uh, yes, I know there's a lot of content here and I know that um, watching the YouTube tutorial will help a lot. So pick and choose the ones that are most interest for you. Um, we can all become specialists in all of these. Um, sure, I mean, I'll ask the, the, the team at, um, um, at the New School TESOL to provide more in-depth um, trainings on this. I'd love to do that, of course. And you have this, this Padlet as well, um, so you're not losing me today. Are there any different resources you can use with Padlet free or early subscriptions? Up to this point, all of them have free subscriptions that allow you to really interact with your students fully. I've, the only paid subscriptions I have are Padlet, so the $90 and the Quizlet teacher, which you can get away with using the Padlet without the Padlet, Quizlet, uh, the, the teacher subscription. Don't let them know I said that. Uh, <laughs> um, but the teacher subscription is great if you want to create your own content and upload custom images. Um, but those are the only two subscriptions that I have. Everything else I'm teaching you here is free or you get enough free, enough, now I wouldn't even call it free trial because you get to use it, but you probably don't get to use the premium features. But those are for you know, people that want to customize the logo and change the landscape of the website. The functionality is usable for all. I love lyrics training. Listen to this, okay? I have been a huge fan of music, okay? And what's really great about uh, lyrics training is for those of you that love to use music closes, you no longer have to print, you no longer have to create your own music closes. This is like wild and mind blowing because I used to do those a lot. Um, now what I use is I use a app slash website called lyrics training. And what it is, is this really cool website where you pick the song, right? You pick the song, um, lyrics training partners with YouTube, they pull in the music video, and then underneath, based off of beginner, intermediate, advanced, um, it fills, it, it pulls outwards. So it helps with speaking, uh, listening practice. This is something that is, you know, hitting the ground and really um, popular. I've seen teachers use this in the classroom on Twitter. Um, and it's great because it pulls out words, right? Not just the target language, but also other words that fall in the lyrics to really give students that confidence boost by able to add an article or, or a word such as like a pronoun that they may be more familiar with. And it records their score. So it goes through chunks in the music video um, and it also allows the student to answer, gives them time to answer line by line. Um, and it'll even repeat it once to help the student um, be able to answer and you can do this as a class or all the students can do it individually um, you can give them the song and ask them to select the appropriate level and it will um, replace that word so it helps with listening specifically since you know music is something that's a great resource and it's a bit trickier to navigate um, only because there's other components to melody um, and such so this is awesome i'm going to use this in my classroom um, you know, pick a song that has the target language that you're focused on and then allow students to be able to play this game where the game itself helps the students. And there's two ways of doing it, multiple choice or fill in the blank. So for beginner students, I recommend the fill in the blank. For my more advanced students, I prefer, I, I recommend the fill in the blank. And you can customize how many words you need to fill in. So it may not, you know, it could be 10 or it could be, you know, all, you know a huge chunk of the, of the song if you like. Um, so that's a really cool resource. Um, peer grade writing. Um, peer grade is, oh, and one last thing before lyrics training. Lyrics training gives you three games free every single day. So students can hop on and they can play three different audio games or do the same song three times to be able to practice listening. So it's three times free um, for an infant minute infinite period of time. Obviously the premium allows you to play the game all day long if you like. Um, so that's one I definitely recommend. And then the writing section, um, for this is, you know, obviously each teacher has their own perception on peer editing and, and peer reviews in the classroom. But for those of you that are interested in that, you can use peer grade as a free resource um, where students can submit their writing papers as they would like a submission link. You submit their papers and then the system will organize it according to whatever peers either you can choose or, 
the system can change can choose people automatically and then those individuals would then peer at it and then by a certain deadline it would be returned to the student and the way the student is evaluated in peer grade is through a rubric so you would ask questions like well how did they do or you know how how strong was the thesis statement what kind what can you recommend so they're not necessarily editing grammar they're providing you know high level feedback and really practicing that skill of giving feedback so that's peer grade for you if you like the tutorial i'll have that link into here um, but that's a little bit more information on that um, I am probably gonna go over five minutes, so bear with me. We're almost at the end. Um, for From one-off projects to uh, project-based learning, I know we have a couple fans on the line of, of that as well. Um, I do have three solutions here for you to use. Um, you can either do a weekly podcast using anchor.fm. This is an application that's really cool. You could have two people in two different locations. You call, a, you click a particular link in the application that links both of you together and you're able to have this radio podcast together where students are able to talk about particular topics and practice you know speaking techniques like back channeling and really cool features of spoken language um, so they can record from two different places it creates a podcast they can do it as many times as they'd like and what's really cool is over the uh, period of time they can create a whole channel and everything, and this is something that's really cool, guys. This will upload to Apple Music and Spotify. Boom. So your students' work can get published in the end if you so choose and if they feel comfortable, depending on the requirements of the program and what's acceptable. But if they wanted their final product to be an actual podcast, um, you know, they can do that and it would go into those channels, which is really, really cool. Um, then there's journals. If, if you're a fan of journaling like I am, you can use Seesaw to have students write journals and then comment on each other. Um, and then you can also create an online book. There's a lot of webinars on book creator and being able to create like a, a book by the end of the semester with all different you know, types of uh, content, both video, uh, you know, audio, image, and, and words as well. So that's really cool, these types of resources. In terms of assessments, I'm sure you've heard of a lot, like Kahoot is a really popular one. I prefer Quizalys because, I'll show you right now. In Quizalys, um, what you're able to do is you're able to give a quiz in real time, see who needs help. The system has its own algorithm of, of figuring out who's struggling, who's doing well, and who's really rocking it. You're able to see in real time the questions that were hardest and review directly after the quiz. And then you can also see if you're giving students the ability to have multiple tries and they can um so you can see their improvement over time and they can go back to the quiz as many times as possible you can set parameters around that as well Quizlet is my favorite because i do fill in the blank quizzes i know i'm an awful teacher <laughs> making them go through the stress of that but what's awesome about Quizlet is that if they add a space in before the word or after the word other programs typically mark it wrong Quizlet is really smart about reading content and so caps or lowercase or, you know, those minor mistakes that you would call off, um, Quizlet is able to capture that quickly and give them an accurate um, score. Cool. That's the end of that section. Um, and I'll talk about a couple more. Um, how do we ensure integrity that all parents don't do their job? Yeah, that's a tough one. I recommend, um, you know, if you're doing, if you want something to be timed, timed Google form quizzes, timeify, a lot of teachers use this where questions are, are timed and they need to be able to respond within a particular time limit. That is actually a limitation that we do have is it's really hard to see, um, you know, people's authentic work. We're not sure who else is behind the camera. I probably would recommend having the camera on so you can supervise as they're taking the quiz to make sure that, you know, their parents are standing behind them. But then there's always loopholes. Uh, to that as well and you can what's great about Quizlet is, is this can be sent at a particular time and shut off at a particular time um, which is great so students can't go on before or uh, way after the last section that i'll cover high level um, i recommend for background schema activation using like word clouds or polling through mentimeter okay so here is the you know, here's an example of one that we did live. Students would add the URL and add the code, and then here they would be able to, you know, vote either as many times or just one, uh, or a word cloud. So Mentimeter is my favorite really for using um, this capability of really being able to 
provide background information on a particular topic and then being able to run with it and understand what is it the students know and what as an instructor can you add. So Mentimeter is my favorite for polling, but you can also use the Zoom polling as well to be able to get a very similar experience. Mentimeter allows you to add graphics and visuals there as well and the tutorial link as well. Um, you can also do real-time collaboration. Um, we did this, okay, so this is not new, this is review. This is um, the ability to go into a Padlet that's open for everyone uh, that's in your class like a, an on link or adding the student specifically into your Padlet and being able to share in real time comments and uh, you know, liking posts as well um, to be able to really foster that real time collaboration, give each um, student an equal voice. Um, so, and that's as easy as creating a second Padlet, Padlet and then giving them that link um, to really be able to edit that. Um, for writing particularly, Google Docs is a great strategy for being able to uh, have a shareable link shared amongst a, a few students in a particular group and have them share you know, their ideas or write an introduction paragraph together or assess whether or not something is, is accurate or not. Um, you can also use their audio feature where they can record. I would, I've tried the audio recording, it's, it's good. Um, sometimes some things flow in that I didn't particularly say, so Flipgrid may be a better option, but this is great for being able to at least assess you know, smaller chunks of language, like a particular sentence. Um, and the last one, I promise, I'm two minutes over time, uh, is monitoring work through, uh, through ClassKit. So what is ClassKit? Um, ClassKit is a program that's free where you develop your, your I do my grammatical chunks in this. So my, gram, my grammar focused content uh, in Padlet, I actually put them on these PowerPoint slides in class kick, like you see here, these are each one's a different slide, and it shoots it out to your students in real time, and you're able to see who's working on what and where they need help. What's fabulous about this is it's in real time. I can jump into any one of these right now, Amy's, Carter's, Daniel's, and Francis, go to their particular slide, look at their work, provide comments, either typing it as content box or providing stickers. I love to give stickers. They can ask questions by putting their hand up or they can, you know, uh, is helping, I guess some, somebody that I'm helping, or you can see other students, you can give them the capability to help each other. So a student can go help another one if they need, they can chat with each other there. I love it for student engagement. So it's a class example. Here's one from my classroom. I blurred out my students' names but you create your own stickers, right? You have each student working at their own pace. I go in, you see their answers in a darker black, so you see where they're adding input. Your stuff is typically grayed a little bit, and you go in, you're able to assess their work, provide comments, say, hey, John, you're doing really well here, or give a sticker like, great star, but here, let me help you with this form. So they get it in real time. The question of micromanagement, am I stressing students out by looking over their shoulders? I mean, there's you know, pros and cons to it. I let my students know that I'm not here to breathe down their shoulders. And with a lot of positive support and encouragement using the sticker feature, they love that I'm able to just review their work in real time and be able to, to give them that one-on-one. -on -one. And I can jump around as many times. It's amazing as an instructor that I can tackle on six students within like two or three minutes and quickly read through their grammar answers. You're probably asking me, Matt, is this like, are you reviewing 14 slides? No. The way I do this is I provide a video lesson. So how I told you that I use video links to teach specific grammar chunks, that's a separate slide. When the student is on this slide, this is actually the slide will become um, outlined. And then I know the students watching the video. Once they jump to the exercise, that outline will transfer over to the next slide and I know they're working on the grammar. So not all of these are assignments or exercises. Some of these are just, you know, read this or review this. And then my main exercises would be like slide four, as you can see here, one was vocabulary, four was a grammar chunk, and then I believe eight or nine was a grammar chunk. So I'm able to see this in real time. Um, cool. So that is the end of my presentation. I went five minutes over. Um, you are welcome to, um, I, I did have a final project here, but we're out of time and that's okay if you did you know, want to contribute your ideas or things that you're doing and share them, you're more than welcome to hear this pilot and really offer what it is that your activities are. I'm not gonna make you do this um, only because we're out of time, 
Um, but this would also just foster some collaboration here, add the activity. I know, uh, I love that you have so many ideas. Please, please carry a journal for the next 48 hours because you're gonna have so many epiphanies at night, so don't plan on sleeping. Make sure you take your melatonin. Um, Sidetrack. Um, but yes, feel free to you know, answer, you know, share as much. I wanted to give you a macro level, so I know I overwhelmed you. Um, so a couple of things, um, I am a little over time. I wanna welcome your questions. There's two ways of doing questions here. You can either add them in the chat box, but if you need to run to your next course, because it's 105, you can also put your questions in this last Padlet. Um, and in the last Padlet, like a post like we did on the map, add your questions. I'll come back to this. You have this link. This is a permanent link. Take this link up here, padlet.com backslash Matthew underscore Kings Library, blah, 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 blah. Save that. That's a permanent link that will never change. And yes, I will type in the chat for your question. Um, Save this. Um, this is going to be a live link forever. You can always come back to this, add your questions, your comments, your concerns. Um, I get a notification. My desktop lights up when you do. Um, so, yeah, I know this is super macro and super high level. I'm like, oh my God. But uh, the reason why I wanted to do this is we all teach different um, levels. We have different forte. Some of us love PBL. I love PBL as well. Shout out to Kamara. I know she's on the line. Um, and, you know, some of us are perhaps, you know, more focused on, you know, National Geographic readings and getting really in depth there. So I want this to have this be more um, of your, um, yeah, to my, oh, I'm sending it to all the panelists. If my panelists, um, if my panelists team could just send out this link that I just sent you guys out to the whole team, that would be awesome. Um, really cool. Um, yeah, so I'm at 107. Um, feel free to leave comments, concerns. Again, if you have any questions, feel free to add those questions um, underneath, you know, the, any of the comments or in the general Q&A feedback. And I will be able to either answer them now or within the next 24 hours. You have my email at the very top. Oh, you're welcome, Gillian. Thank you so much, Leslie and Roshi. You guys are awesome. Um, so feel free to use this as your, you know, your, your resource to go back, your, your pilot Bible, so to speak. Um, you know, I do plan on adding a few more resources here and there, but really being able to use it as a resource to whatever skill that it is that you're trying to target, because I think it's very important. Um, hopefully this classes, these, um, these materials will help you increase, um, you know, your level of engagement in the classroom and just have it be more exciting and allow your students to really express their creativity. I really think that's really the prime purpose of this. Yes, Kaylin, I'm so excited for you. Yes, um, yes, take your time. If you even need, you know, 15, 30 minutes, I am super happy to hop on a, a phone call or a webcam and just really walk through what it is that you're teaching and how we can use Padlet. I love to consult for free, um, so feel free to use me as a resource. Um, I love it when people pick my brain and we come up with really clever, creative solutions to really fit your students' needs here. Um, so yeah, absolutely, terrific, good, good, good. Of course, you're welcome. Um, thank you guys for hopping on. Are there any questions I can answer? I know it's a lot and you're gonna need time to sit on it. Um, feel free to email me um, as well there. Roshi, did you wanna hop on? Should we do Q&A? What's on the welcoming side? The only thing that was on the welcoming side was the shorter link to Padlet, you have the, the longer link and that's permanent. The shorter link, you know, that could get adjusted. Um, we will also have a recording in as well. So I'm opening the, up the floor to some Q&A. Uh, if you have to run, feel free to put your question wherever on this Padlet or in the Q&A. Um, and uh, yeah, that's, that's it for the educational piece of Padlet. Should we do some Q&A? Hi, Matt. Hey, how you doing? Good, fabulous, brilliant. I think you covered a lot of questions people need to process. I mean, I am. Um, there are some questions here. I guess a lot of people want to break down this by skill, perhaps. Yes. And see what's <clears throat> relevant for their classroom. Wonderful. Yes, it's, it's, a, it's a lot. <laughs> it's like an encyclopedia of ideas. But um, I definitely recommend really reviewing what resources it is that you're currently doing and then being able to implement those first 
Mm. And then adding on the, the more exhilarating activities to really supplement that what you're doing. Tech is just a tool, it's not the teacher. So I, mm. I wouldn't want you to get too overwhelmed with using a lot in your first class. And trial and error, I did not introduce all of this to my class the first week. Each week I would, int- I would experiment. I felt like I was in a laboratory. I would add Flipgrid, see what, how are they gonna respond? Are they having difficulties? Uh, you know, what are the common questions? How can I better prep this? Perhaps there's an alternative. So, you know, be able to just pick and choose one, go with, you know, your gut, pick the ones that are most exhilarating to you. Um, and then if you feel during the class, I'm really, listen, I really want to boost the way I do vocabulary, check back on the Padlet and people's comments and, um, and, and, and post to see what else could be beneficial. Wonderful. Thank you so very much, Matt. Thank you. And I'm sure you'll be back. A lot of people want you back. So we'll <laughs> oh, make that happen. Yeah. And uh, I think that most people can email you with questions since we're over time now. Sure. Yeah. They can email me or add them in the Q&A palette that's at yeah. the very bottom of this website. Exactly. Wonderful. So guys, thank you so much for attending today. Fabulous uh, webinar and the recording will be made available very soon. And once again, this is all of us signing off. And thank you once again. Thank you so much.